Hey everyone, this is Samuel. I welcome you all to second in series of my videos, uh, which we call as Coffee with Paper. Um, we started on a journey for discovering different models to learn wind up meetings, and now we're gonna continue further on that road. We last time we discussed a paper from Benji and others when we learned about a very powerful model and a very powerful architecture um, where we used a feed forward neural network with a linear um, uh, projection layer and a non-linear hidden layer to basically jointly learn word vector representations and a statistical language model. Now we're gonna improve on that and we're gonna study work from Miklov and others at Google and uh, basically what they suggest, suggest in this paper are two basic models uh, which would help us reduce computational cost in huge ways. Um, to give you all, to quote from the paper, you would be able to learn uh, word vectors over 1.6 billion words in less than one day and the word vectors learned from those uh, are actually state of art in uh, when we talk about syntactic and semantic similarities. Um, okay so starting on with the details of the paper the paper is titled efficient estimation of word representations in vector space uh, this is part of the series of papers published by Miklov and others uh, at Google. Uh, I chose this paper because this goes over the two models that we're going to discuss in detail over the next two videos and few other papers by them which I would be discussing. So this kind of lays the ground basic work. Uh, we can talk about the objectives in this paper as I discussed is to, dis to discuss the two models and uh, to discuss um, the comparison of them with uh, all other models that were existing at that time. Um, some of the existing models that we used at that time, existing solutions actually, were using an n-gram model as we discussed in our earlier video also. The problem with n-gram model is that it do not scale up pretty, pretty well. Um, so I'm gonna just lay down some key facts that are uh, that might be interesting. Uh, first is that um, uh, what we did in our last video was to we learned a uh, um, word vector with uh, dimensionality between 50 to 100 and over a few million words. Second is um, the similarity is actually beyond some syntactic uh, regularities like if uh, we have a vector for king and then we have a vector for man and then we subtract them and then add a vector of woman and then we find that this vector is pretty close is closest to the vector of queen and that is pretty awesome because we are able to go beyond uh, the normal syntactic uh, stuff that we would hope for uh, this paper actually goes on and then actually shows more of these uh, syntactic and semantic similarities which we would see shortly um, so let's talk about some existing model architectures that are currently in place and uh, quickly wrap them around and then go and further discuss uh, the two models proposed uh, so existing model architectures um, uh, LSA and LDA, uh, I don't know if you guys know about them, but uh, latent semantic analysis and latent racial allocation uh, basically two uh, models that are being used. Uh, uh, why they do not uh, sound as good as the neural network models because uh, um, of them not being able to maintain the linear regularities and being expensive and going expensive with the data amount of data we have uh, now to compare the different neural norm models we would need to come up with something so we came up with training complexity which is basically a function of number of epochs and uh, number of words in the training set and uh, the model architecture complexity which is given by Q which we would be discussing for different neural models 
so we're gonna start with the uh, first the last video and trying to find out the training complexity for that uh, the feed forward neural net uh, basically language model basically talks about um, the function the parameter Q in terms of number of input variables number of hidden variables and vocab size and if you could see the dominant factors are is basically hidden hidden layer vector in, into the vocab size uh, but we could actually solve that using uh, changing a data structure from balanced binary trees to Huffman trees which would basically allow us to reduce this into um, h cross log of uh, log of vocab size uh, but still the dominant uh, factor if we have to find out in this would be equal to n cross t cross h uh, similarly there is recurrent neural net language model which is a progression over the uh, neural network language model uh, basically it has a recurrent uh, matrix uh, that connects hidden layer to itself using a time delayed connections what it basically allows us now is to have some memory kind of structure which was actually a suggestion from Benjo's paper uh, so now the information from the past can be represented in the hidden layer state uh, and that gets updated based on the current input and the state of the hidden layer in the previous time step um, so in this case uh, also we used uh, the similarly a hierarchical softmax which is basically using a Hoffman trace uh, and reduces the complexity of h cross v to h cross log of v and um, so it doesn't have any projection layer only hidden layer so uh, the dominant factor becomes to h cross h um going to the next is the new models that basically are proposed in this the first of those is called as continuous bag of words now continuous bag of words um basically what it does is all words gets projected into the same position the vectors are averaged so here we see as in the diagram the different in a window we take a window of uh, uh words and project those vectors to get uh, our output um, so as you could see the it's the architecture is similar to the neural net language model since uh, the projection layers is shared for all word positions um, the second model which they proposed is the skip gram model now skip gram model basically is different from uh, the continuous bag of words or CBOW as we call them because instead of uh, using the surrounding words to predict center word we basically predict from center words the surrounding words it's actually the reverse way up uh, let's talk about the results of this paper this paper gives us three key takeaways uh, first, uh, we studied the quality of vector representation in terms of syntactic and semantic similarities across various models and we're going to walk over those results very shortly. Second, we observed that we could actually uh, train high quality word vectors using very simple model architectures instead of using the big neural net language models. Third because we are able to reduce our computational complexity to such lower levels we can actually learn over large data sets um, let's talk about the syntactic and semantic similarities uh, so i will show you some example that they basically quoted in the paper uh, so some of the syntactic and semantic similarities they talked about in terms of uh, common capital cities Athens, Greece, Oslo, Norway uh, city and state like Chicago, Illinois to Stockton to California uh, currencies like Angola to Kwanzaa, Iran to Real and uh, similarly if it could, it could be done on uh, syntactic way like comparative great to greater tough to tougher um, so this is pretty awesome to, to be able to kind of derive those results from 
word vectors. This is pretty awesome, actually, and very powerful. Um, next, they come up and they talk about uh, comparison of architectures using models trained on same data and um, all the different models that we talked about, they go on and discuss over those. And next we talk about uh, oh, comparison over publicly available uh, word vectors um, and how they performed. Um, in general, if you want to know, um, I personally prefer Skipgram over all other model sets. I found them much better in implementation. Um, so what's coming up after this? Uh, I have uh, another video recorded, which is a follow-up paper by McLove and others, uh, uh, where we would learn to optimize our models further and uh, talk about um, uh, composition of strings. Um, also, I have two code show videos uh, of the above models, which we actually discussed today. I'm gonna get into more mathematical details of those. Uh, those won't be part of this Coffee with Paper series. I have to probably come up with a new name for that series. Uh, once again, thanks for watching my videos, and if you like them, like and subscribe. Thank you.